Thou art gone up on high, Thou art gone up on high. Thou hast led captivity captive, Thou hast led captivity captive, and receive the gifts for men, yea, even for thine enemies. Good morning. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to talk over Terry. Um, welcome to worship. Happy Memorial Day weekend to you all. Good to have you here. And now, a word from our sponsor. Uh, microphone. Everybody has to use the microphone. It's not just you. <laughs> Don't sing into the microphone then. <laughs> okay. Um, since I wasn't sure how many people would be here with us on this Memorial Weekend Sunday, I decided to give the congregation a little task to help support our choir. You will be singing with us today. Please turn to your bulletin on page 11. You will see it says choir anthem, you call us Lord, but then the verses are printed there in the bulletin. So that means you get to sing with us. Isn't that exciting? Yay! Yay! So what I will do is um, Francis and Sue have like a lovely little introduction and then I'll turn to both you and the choir and I'll do this, and that's when you sing. You call us Lord da ba san da, ba di da 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 ba di di, and you'll be great. All right, thank you so much. We'll go over it again as we get closer. Thank you. Beware, if you sing today those verses, you'll be up here next week. <laughs> I just went to a, well, never mind. We won't talk about that. Again, good to have you here as we worship together this day. Let's prepare for worship with the prelude.
Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to swirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding. Where your teachings and your ways turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our opening hymn, 412.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all the truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of the robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in, in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole world is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, 
Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed from you, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 29 responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of your God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to invite the children forward for children's sermon. Let's sing them forward with... Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, yes, I know. Lord, tells me so. Little ones in him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. It is Memorial Day. It is Memorial Day weekend. Yes, it is. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. That means no school. Yes. <laughs> that means no school. Oh, and you know, and know what? <coughs> My school. Right, right. But you know what else it means for Monday? There's a parade. What? You're in it? Wow, that's really cool. Oh, okay. Well, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what today is. And you know what today is? Holy Trinity Sunday. Yay! What? Yes, it is. And there's no school at your school today. Isn't that cool? Yeah, there's not school on Sundays. You're right. No, no, that's right. So, I want you to tell me what the Trinity is. Trinity. Trinity. Huh? Huh? Scratchy, scratchy, scratch. This is a symbol of the Trinity. You have it? I have it right there. I didn't put it there for today. It's been on this, like, 
the whole time I've had it. I think that's the only Trinity symbol. Yes. So, what's the Trinity? That. That, yes. That's a symbol <laughs> of the Trinity. Banana. That's a cheater head answer, by the way. Banana. Yes, okay, we're not going to do that. But we're going to say the Trinity is the way we talk about God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three things, like tri, like a tricycle. How many wheels does a tricycle have? Three. Three, yes. So that is Trinity. There are tri wheels. Right. So we talk about God in three ways Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But we talk about having one God, right? But we have three ways we get to know God. It's kind of like pineapple. Pineapple? Do you like pineapple? You don't like pineapple? Yummy. No. Yummy. Oh, bummer. Yummy. Okay. No, she's not weird. I know people who are allergic to pineapple. So, but we get pineapple, and you can get pineapple as a whole pineapple, you know, with the cool leaf things on top. Yeah? Or you can get crushed pineapple that you might put in jello, right? Or just eat regular. Or you could get, you could get pineapple rings like you put on pineapple upside down cake. Mmm, yummy cake. You don't like that either? And then you could slice them up into squares. You can put them into the little, the little pieces, yes. So all of those things are pineapple. All of those things are pineapple, but they come to us in different ways. And that's when we talk about the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's what we talk about, about God. Okay? Can you fold your hands? We're going to share a prayer, and then I'll send you on your way. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for today. And for the three ways you come to us. Amen. All right, stand up. Stand up, face the congregation. And let's bless these kids. Children of God. and glorify your Father in heaven. All right, go back to your seats. The Holy Gospel according to John from the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, very true, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. 
Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. St. Augustine, or Augustine, depending upon where you're from and your preference of pronunciation, uh, was one of the great, is one of the great saints of the church. And he was really struggling to understand the concept of the Trinity. How we can say we believe in only one God and yet talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So he went for a walk on the beach And he saw a little boy digging a hole in the sand, as kids are uh, likely to do. Um, And he was using a seashell for a shovel. And then he'd he'd run over to the water and he'd scoop up a bunch of water and he'd run back and he'd put the water in the hole he had made. What are you doing, my little man? Augustine said to him. I'm trying to put the ocean in this hole. And peace came to Augustine's soul at that point as he realized that was exactly what he was trying to do, to put God in his mind completely. Yet that was not possible. God is so big and so, so beyond our understanding. It doesn't, it doesn't all go. This is Trinity Sunday, a day, I believe it's the only day in the church year that is not named for a person or an event. It is a day we recognize how the God comes to us in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, but three persons, but still one not the clearest piece of teaching or theology that we have in the church. So it's a good thing that we don't have to fit the ocean in the hole, so to speak. And while I could drone on up here about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, about how God comes to us and meets us where we are in whatever form God wants to for us and for our salvation, while you are thinking about where you're going to be on this beautiful Sunday afternoon, I won't do that to you. But what I will talk about is how um, all three persons of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, call us to action in their own ways. Our first lesson from Isaiah, this is a great text. This was This was an incredible shaping text for me as I, uh, this gave me thoughts of of becoming a pastor, of hearing the call that that God was placing um, on my life. I got to be Isaiah in a church play. Yeah, that's something every teenager wants to do, right? Yes, oh, pick me, pick me. Um, And looking back, that really helped inform me of how God acts, of how God works in the world and in people's lives in quiet but amazing ways. Isaiah recognized in this vision, he recognized his place before God. Uh, He was a man of a people of unclean lips, and yet he has seen God, which was believed to be the death of you if you ever did see God face to face. But then God acts without Isaiah even asking taking a burning coal, the grace of God, and the simple yet powerful act of touching that coal to his lips. Isaiah is then inspired to answer God's call to go speak to God's people on his behalf. Jesus had a fascinating conversation with Nicodemus about salvation. I love this conversation because of the way Nicodemus just asks a question close and Jesus gives him the answer to what he should have said. Um, Nicodemus was stretched to hear the things that Jesus was saying. But Nicodemus was close 
to understanding Jesus and his mission, but he was not quite there. And sometimes that makes it even harder to see that mission. You know, not seeing the forest through the trees kind of thing. So Jesus gives Nicodemus a, a, a follower 101 or a believer's 101 class right then and there. Recognizing his doubts and in previous debates and conversations with him and the other Jewish high council folks, Jesus makes it clear and to the point. When Jesus is lifted up, and that's an allusion to Good Friday when he's on the cross. When Jesus is lifted up, all will see and believe and have eternal life. And that is just where it begins. Jesus calls people to faith, to believe in what God is proclaiming through him. And those same people, those same believers, will later be called to go and tell others about this saving good news. Look at what God has done. Raising up prophets like Isaiah, the burning coal, the heavenly vision, and a call that he jumped to do. Jesus living and dying and rising again. Calling all believers to tell others. Jesus then promises later in, in John's gospel that he will send the advocate, the Holy Spirit, to guide future believers in the mission that they are given. And we are all called to be part of this mission that Jesus gives. And the mission is simple. Believe. Go. Tell. That's the mission. We sum it up pretty easily. Sometimes you don't even need the go part because oftentimes the telling is needed right where you are, among your family, friends, neighbors, workmates, people like that. We have a much longer vision statement. It's on the front of our bulletins. It's on a banner um, in, the, in the entry hall. It's uh, something we share every month at our council meetings. And this describes how we envision carrying out that mission. The mission given to us by God. The mission to believe and go and tell. Different people, different congregations find new and different and sometimes exciting, sometimes really boring ways. But it leads people to faith. It leads them to believe. And it encourages them then to go and tell others about Jesus. We know that we are called. We know that we are to believe. I suspect that's the main reason why many of you are, most of you are here today, right? It's because you believe. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. I think we stumble a bit, though, in the telling part, the part where we go out and tell others about Jesus. And sometimes I think it's because we're just uncomfortable with some of the words. So I'm going to help you out today. This is the congregational participation point to help warm you up for our choir anthem in a bit. <laughs> Repeat this word after me. Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Jesus. That's good. God. God. Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's tricky. That's got four whole syllables. <laughs> Holy, Trinity. Holy Trinity. See, we know those words. We can say those words. How about God loves you? God's grace covers all. Follow Jesus. We can do it. We got the words. We know what happened. We know what good news we've been given and that we have to share. And you know far more people around here than I do. You know people who may not have a church home uh, and no longer um, who have a church who had a church home and no longer go whether it's from here or from other places you know people who are searching for God searching for meaning whether you realize it or not and since God 
who sent Jesus and the Holy Spirit for us and for our salvation is important to you. Believe. Go. Tell. Since we hear the call of God that lets us, doesn't, doesn't, you know, commands us and all that other stuff, but lets us, we get to do this, lets us go and share this crazy good news, then believe and go and tell. And since the Trinity is really hard to explain, stick with the easy part about God loving us so much that he sent us Jesus that all who believe will be saved. Then believe and go and tell. That's your call. That's all of our calls. And that's our mission. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten by the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he suffered death. 
death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Church, Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Abba God, you have brought us into your family, claiming us as beloved children. Bless your family of faith and gifts of cooperation and graciousness. Increase our hospitality toward all expressions of faith and teach us to honor our shared humanity. To we lift to you the Rakeley family, the Riesbeck family, and the Sarno family. We pray for your love to shine brightly in their lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your love and power burst forth in the flashes of lightning, the dance of the wind, and the deeply rooted trees of the forest sustain fragile and interconnected ecosystems that they flourish for generations to come. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give your blessings of peace to the nation. Shelter all who risk life and live in livelihood Protect others from violence, conflict, and injustice, especially Jeffrey Kuhn, Warren Kuhn, and Keenan Miller. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember all who have lost their lives in war and conflict. Merciful God, you are a God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore holiness to all who seek hope and healing, especially Tom Whaley, Wendy Stewart, Stewart, Joanne Savino, and those we name aloud within our hearts. Merciful God, Strengthen bonds between parents, children, and families of all varieties. We pray especially for adoptive and foster families, multi-generational households, and blended families. Grant gifts of nature and patience to all caregivers. Merciful God. The Spirit bears grateful witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints. As they live with hope in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in faith that we recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal life. Merciful God. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Come quickly to our aid through the power and spirit of the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. God loves you, and so do I. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
posted next to you. Tomorrow. So we are singing happy birthday to her today. <laughs> Hit it, Francis. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what you have sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God, of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Please be seated. All are welcome to commune this day. Please come forward, receive the bread. There's wine and grape juice offered. We have gluten-free um, wafers if that is needed as well. Blessings are available for those who wish not to commune this day. And for those at home, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Those who are able, please rise. With Deb, Warren, Gretchen, Susan, and Sue, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ protect you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have some announcements to give. Um, one is that there will not be Wednesday Bible study for this Wednesday and next, but we will resume on the 12th of June with a look at the Ten Commandments. So all are welcome to join in. That's Wednesdays at 11 o'clock. And we'll meet on and off through the summer, depending upon when the class will be here. So. Good morning. I have a few announcements. Um, one is a reminder that next Sunday we will do part two of the documentary God and Country. All are invited and a light lunch will be provided. Um, we do have a date for our next justice journey, so get your little pens out, your phone, whatever. We will be traveling to Binghamton on Thursday, June 13th, and we will be uh, walking Binghamton's newly minted Freedom Trail. Um, there are 12 historical markers along that trail, and we'll be walking that and having a picnic lunch and returning early, maybe less early if we stop for ice cream. Just saying. <laughs> and then the third thing I have... Um, I was going to try to keep it to two announcements today, but this is Synod's fault. Um, <laughs> Upstate New York Synod is offering a video uh, participatory sort of conference via Zoom on a topic that we have covered through our social justice activities. Um, this is speaking across conflict. Um, there are a number of presenters through Synod that will be directing that conversation, and they are looking for people to participate. This flyer is not in your bulletin, but there are some on the back table if you're interested. Um, this does require a sign up so that you get the Zoom link. Um, that's it. Do so you want me to do the other one too? Okay. Four announcements. I'm on a roll. Whatever. <laughs> Next um, week, just hand your announcements to Lori. She'll do all of them. <laughs> Just That's a right. reminder that your donations for the Synod's collection for World Hunger um, are due next Sunday as well. And uh, we hope to hit that $500 and then Ruth and Pastor and I will be happy to uh, contribute some more on top. So thank you. Good. And just uh, in addition to that, yes, the Synod Assembly is meeting on June 3rd and 4th uh, up in Syracuse. If you would keep uh, Ruth, Lori, and I and the whole Synod uh, in your prayers as we prepare for and then meet in assembly. Okay, while they're at Synod, we have Community Kitchen next week, okay? And uh, I have another thing. Oh, let me think. Oh, I was filling the little, little libraries. We need more books. People keep coming and using the books, and they, it, it really is beneficial for everybody. And remember, the end of June is our noisy offering, so start saving those coins. I was hoping you'd have that shaker thing with you. Yeah, well, I get a lot of these pill bottles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can get them when you get older. Uh, that's what I've heard. I won't tell you about my collection. <clears throat> Not because I'm older, though. Anyway, those who are able, please rise for the benediction. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.